वेलकम टू कॉन्फ्लिक्ट न्यूज 24 वी शेयर डेली अपडेट्स ऑन ग्लोबल कॉन्फ्लिक्ट्स फर्स्टली ईरान टुडे फायर्ड 73 बैलिस्टिक मिसाइल्स इनटू नेबरिंग इराक इराकी कर्दिस्तान ऑटोनोमस रीजन वाज हिट 43 प्लेसेस वर हिट U.S. military intervened. It shot down an Iranian drone. What happened there? Why did Iran hit Iraqi Kurdistan region today? Is this attack linked to ongoing demonstrations in Iran? Uh, secondly, viewers, uh, we have a new story uh, about Russia-Ukraine conflict. and link to this conflict is the ongoing gas supply issue between russia and europe russia europe uh, gas pipeline one of the pipelines uh, has been blown up and both russia and us are indirectly accusing each other who blew up this russian gas pipeline in the baltic sea and uh, is this the last card uh, which is being used by russia against uh, europe or uh, is us behind this uh, sabotage and us wants to sell its lng to russia Third viewers, uh, U.S. is going to supply more HIMARS to Ukraine. It has been confirmed that high uh, mobility uh, artillery rocket firing systems HIMARS are being given to Ukraine. More HIMARS because Ukraine is already using HIMARS, which are inflicting heavy losses on Russian forces, Russian ammunition depots, their bases in eastern Ukraine in Donbas region. And lastly, we have details for you on a map about the battlefield developments in Ukraine, where. Lemon is being encircled. You can say Lemon has been. uh circled only it has been encircled only one supply route is available for russian forces we have details for you on a map i think russians will have to withdraw from limit uh, firstly viewers iran today fired 73 ballistic missiles into iraqi kurdistan region kurds live in iraq iran Syria and Turkey this ethnic group has been struggling for years to have an independent state it does not have a state of its own uh, turkish uh, kurds uh, are uh, at the mercy of turkish forces turkey has declared uh, some of them as terrorist groups iran has declared some kurdish groups at terrorist groups as well only in iraq they have an autonomous region and us has a military base in this autonomous kurdish region in iraq which is part of iraq but it is autonomous uh, in erbil uh, iraqi kurdistan there is us military presence we know that for more than a week demonstrations have been ongoing in iran uh, protest started after the death of massa amini a 22 year old girl who died in police custody and massa amini uh, was from iranian kurdistan province in iran there is kurdistan province where kurds live there and after that we saw huge demonstrations in kurdistan province now iran is accusing iraqi kurdistan based groups that they are fueling conflict in iranian kurdistan province that is why iran today fired 73 ballistic missiles on iraqi kurdistan 43 places were hit 
uh, around 10 civilians have been killed and some of these ballistic missiles landed around 400 kilometers away from where they were fired. Long-range ballistic missiles were fired on Iraqi Kurdistan. Iranian drones became involved too. Then uh, US military intervened a little because it has uh, a military base there. And US forces shot down an Iranian Mohajir 6 drone today over Iraqi Kurdistan. So it's a new escalation. Iran is accusing Iraq-based uh, Kurd groups in Iraqi Kurdistan that they are fueling uh, protests, demonstrations, conflict in Iran. US uh, will obviously uh, back, it is backing uh, demonstrations in Iran. It would like demonstrations to gain momentum. If this demonstration in Kurdistan province of Iran gains momentum, it could lead to more military escalation between Iran and Iraqi Kurdistan province where we know that Iraqi Peshmergas uh, are trained, backed and armed by uh, US. Uh, Peshmergas are the Kurdish forces of Iraqi Kurdistan. So tensions there, viewers, so civilian skill. Will there be some counter attack from Iraqi Kurdistan on Iranian territories? That remains to be seen. Uh, secondly, viewers, uh, a new story about gas supply issue between Russia and Europe. Europe uh, has been relying heavily on Russian gas. U.S. Europe say that Russia is using gas as a weapon. It is suspending gas supplies to Europe uh, before the start of winter. It wants Europe to give in. It wants Europe to stop supporting Ukraine. Uh, on Monday, a Russian gas pipeline which transports gas from Russia to Germany was blown up. In the Baltic Sea, uh, it was blown up. Since Monday, we have been hearing mutual accusations. US and Russia are indirectly accusing each other of being behind this incident. Russia says that US wants to sell its LNG to Europe. That is why it has carried out this act uh, sabotage uh, on Russian gas pipeline under the Baltic Sea. US and Europe say that uh, Russia is using gas as a weapon against Europe. Winter is about to start and before that, Russia is deliberately suspending gas supplies uh, to Europe. There are three main gas supply routes from Russia to Europe. Yours. One is this pipeline blown up uh, and it will take around three to six months to repair this pipeline. It means that uh, there won't be any gas supplies to Europe from Russia by Nord Steam 1 and 2 because its section in Baltic Sea has been blown up. Second route of gas supply from Russia to Europe is through Ukraine. Russian and Ukrainian gas companies are involved in a dispute uh, over uh, payment of transit fee. And third route is uh, through Turkey. So one route totally cut off, two routes still available. Russia is pumping gas to Europe uh, through Ukraine and through Turkey. But before the start of winter, in coming weeks, we could see suspension of this gas supply as well. That is why gas prices going up in Europe. Before the start of uh, winter, gas rationing has started. Germany is suffering the most. German industry is suffering the most. And Germany is on the brink of a recession, partly because of uh, uh, suspension of gas supplies from Russia. So both sides accusing each other. 
repair work will start after a week because this gas pipeline was full of gas. Now all gas will leak, then uh, repair work will start, which will take around three to six months. So coming winter is uh, very difficult. Uh, it's testing winter for Europe. Thirdly, viewers, US is going to provide more high Mars to Ukraine. We know that high Mars, high mobility artillery rocket systems uh, have hurt Russian forces since they were supplied to Ukrainian forces. These high Mars are extremely precise. Rockets fired by high Mars systems are extremely precise. Within 90 kilometer area, these rockets can precisely hit targets and Russian ammunition depots, their headquarters, their uh, military assets, uh, bridges uh, and other strategic places have been very precisely hit by US supplied Hamas to Ukrainian forces. We know that US EU countries, they provide intelligence to Ukrainian forces weapons to and then they guide uh, Ukraine forces how to use these weapons precisely against Russian targets in Donbass. Uh, US gave only 16 high mass to Ukraine but now reportedly US has approved supply of 18 more high mass to Ukraine. These HIMARS are being used very effectively by uh, Ukrainian forces against Russian targets. And now when Ukrainian forces are on the offensive, Russia is uh, defending, especially in Kharkiv, in Donetsk as well. Uh, Russia is uh, not on the offensive, it is defending its gains. Now, when Ukrainian forces have a momentum on their side, US is stepping up for supply of high mass to Ukraine, which will definitely hurt Russians in the coming days. Lastly, viewers, Lemon, a key town in Donetsk, is being encircled by Ukrainian forces. Some key towns to the north of Lemon have been retaken by Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces have managed to reach Donetsk, Luhansk border. We have details for you on a map. Have a look at this map. Ukrainian counteroffensive in Kharkiv Oblast, which started somewhere from here, is going to reach Donetsk, Luhansk border here. Last stronghold of Russian military in Donetsk area, which is between Loansk and Kharkiv, is under threat. Lemon bears. In previous videos, I have been updating you about Ukrainian advance towards Lemon, uh, all the way from the areas close to Chuhiv. Ukrainian forces advanced, they took control of uh, areas in Kharkiv, then they entered uh, Donetsk here, this is Kharkiv-Donetsk border, they crossed uh, Oskel River, uh, they crossed uh, uh, this river, uh, Sivsky Donets as well, and gradually they were moving towards last Russian stronghold in Donetsk. Uh, not uh, in entire Donetsk, but this Donetsk part, which is between Loansk and Kharkiv. Uh, Lemon under Russian control, but it is being encircled, viewers. Uh, to the west and north of Lemon, all major places have come under Ukrainian uh, control. You can see uh, Novoselivka here. Firstly, secondly, Norway can be seen. Thirdly, a Kolo Diyazi can be seen. These are new uh, territorial gains by Ukrainian military in the last uh, 48 to 72 hours. It has been visually confirmed. Ukrainian military is in Novoselivka, Kolo Diyazi, and Norway. And uh, interestingly, uh, the military, Ukrainian military, has managed to reach the border, uh, Luansk-Donetsk border. 
this is Luansk, uh, uh, Donetsk border and reportedly gradually, gradually uh, Russian forces are being pushed back into Luansk. You can see uh, Red Kordab here. To the east of Red Kordab is this settlement. Uh, you can see its name. It is Katerinivka. It has come under Ukrainian control. And this is Donetsk, Luansk war. So you see that from Kharkiv, Ukrainian military has managed to reach Luansk border by taking parts of Kharkiv and parts of Donetsk. Now, this last Russian stronghold remaining in Donetsk, uh, Donetsk part between Luansk and uh, uh, Kharkiv is Lemon. Lemon is encircled. To the north, all major towns under Ukrainian control. To the west as well. To the south as well. You can see here Debrova. I think uh, around a week ago, I reported about Ukrainian forces uh, having entered Debrova. They have crossed uh, Sivuski Donets and they have entered Debrova. You see that only one supply line is available for Russian troops in Lemon, and that is from Krimina. Reportedly, Ukrainian forces are now putting pressure upon this supply line. Russians will have to withdraw from Lemon, it seems. You can see here the border, a Donetsk, Luansk border. Uh, it seems that uh, Russians are going to withdraw back into Loansk and then fighting will start for these two major Loansk cities, Severodonetsk and Lyschansk. Belohorivka is under Ukrainian control for some days, we know. And if Russians lose uh, Lemon, obviously uh, pressure will be uh, shifted towards Kremena. Uh, Rubezne and then the two cities, Severodonetsk and Lyschansk, which were taken by Russians after weeks of fighting. So, I think that fighting is definitely approaching Loansk. From Donetsk, it is now going to approach Loansk in coming days. Thank you for watching.